bands. Team Dignitas, LeBlanc, Nidalee, as well as Ziggs off the table. Team Coast have taken away Soraka and Karthus. Jax is still available. Five mid lane bands. Quick shot. And first pick, Kha'Zix, maybe? Coast have banned Kha'Zix in both of their previous games. This is going to be breaking the norm as far as the Kha'Zix is concerned. Five for five. Apparently the name of the game is Lucian in North America. It's been day two of the North American LCS playoffs. Today is his day. He is getting first pick so much. Today, he was his, his day yesterday. I mean, we've just seen yeah. so much Lucian, which is expected, of course. But first picking it, you know, it's one of those things, I guess, First picking a support is safe as well. You don't reveal your hand, you don't give anything away. You don't give anything away by locking Lucian in. And they're giving it to Cutie Pie, who won with Lucian in game one of this very series. Yeah, but Kiwi Kid's a great Thresh, and Daydreamin' is a great Thresh as well, so they are just putting more preference on Lucian. It's a surprising move because that's just not the way it has been for the majority of the split, especially with all the talk on this 4.5 patch about how there's so many must bans and so many super high priority picks, and then a safe 80 carry becomes the first pick priority for the league is just obscure to me. Well, let's see how this pick and ban phase plays out. Team Coast, the makings of the same composition that we've seen from them in games one and two. Thresh and Elise locked in. It was the same picks and bans from game one, and it was the second round of picks from game two. Let's see where Dignitas goes with theirs. Kha'Zix comes in big for Crumbs. That is him escaping the bands, and Crumbs is very, very happy about that. I actually expect to see a lot more of the same from the rest of the lineup. We're probably going to see Lee Sin versus Aurelia again in the top lane since Jax is gone. Do you lock Ziggs in now if you're on Team Coast side? I would love Band away. Correct. I would well love spotted. to lock in. Ziggs well spotted, Kevin. Shifter might have to go with something a little bit different, and that's gonna gonna be very telling for what Scar ends up going for. Lulu was kind of a hover last game. It might be what Scar ends up going back to, or maybe they think he's a little bit too nerfed. I really don't know what Scar has left in the tank. Whether or not Kiwi Kid wants to pull out the Leona again, he has played through so much Annie, known for his Annie play. Most likely going to go for another aggressive support Ooh. over on Team Coast side. Caitlyn locked in for Wiz Fusion. First time we're seeing it this series. And of course, Shifter has got that Lulu for the mid lane. And the Lulu mid lane there from Shifter, I think blocks even more of Scar's picks. He is in a really dangerous spot here. He might just have to go Orion again because that's all he has left. Whenever we see those Oriana picks, you know, they can be game changing. They can be. Shockwaves can win you games. But more often than not, they're just meh waves, and they're shockingly average at best. Coast really back Dignitas into a corner here, as far as their mid lane picks go, with all those bans, especially Dignitas fearing Shifter's champion pool so much that they had to throw three bans at him. And it's amazing because they were fine playing Nidalee yesterday. Very surprised that they're, they, they played the pick and ban phase this way. Well, we'll see how it affects their actual in-game. We are seeing Crumbs on Kha'Zix for the first time this series. has been banned out in both games one and two. And Crumbs, he did a, a fantastic job in game one. He really did a lot to get Dignitas into a powerful position and into the lead. And we'll need to see if he can interrupt Coast with a very disruptive jungler. Yeah, I really wonder about the Zion Spartan pick too. If, if the, the Nasus hover or the Nasus have really got me intrigued because that would be very similar to the Lulu Mundo that Curse was running, but Aurelia is what has got them to the game three. Of course, a little bit more support this time for them. Yeah, not, not a massive yeah. change, I feel, in no. style from not Team Coast composition. They've got very similar types of champions. You've still got great wave clear from that Lulu. So Aurelia was locked in for the third time. Zion Spartan hoping to replicate his very strong performance in the previous game. And Dig with another somewhat wombo combo comp. And a couple of things that we know. Zion Spartan has gotten going in both of these games. When he's been up against Cruiser's Lee Sin, I think that can absolutely happen again. Shifter has had the absolute upper hand on Scar, and Scar had a poor game on Orianna. Then the other thing is Crumbs has been dying to play Kha'Zix, but this time if he goes in for resets, there will be Lulu shields to try and stop this. And the overall rotations were in the favor of Coast last game with very similar compositions. When I consider all these things, I actually feel like Coast has a really big edge in this one. Well, we'll need to see how that early game plays out because Coast slowly in game one, they fell behind, game two evened it out and actually grabbed themselves a lead. Once again, as the teams are loading into this game, head over to Twitter and keep locking in your best guess 
more educated guess, I suppose, about who will be heading to the locker room with the win. Yes, tweet us at LOL Esports. Use the hashtag DIGWIN or CSTWIN, because that's Dick and Coast. Well spotted. Well, we only it has got been three a long letters. day. We got three letters. It has been. It has been. Watching the whole day. time, you might just be hashtag coast when you spell it with the actual spelling. <laughs> Use vowels. It's not how we play here. See, this is this is why you're sitting in the analyst seat, yes. you know, breaking down the crucial information. What was what was the vote? Was it 83 percent in favor of Dick? It last was. Time we yep, it was in the 80s the last time we checked before last game. But after this neutralizing game two, I imagine it's going to be swinging a little bit back in the other direction. We'll have to see about that. Yeah. Uh, we'll have to see how the public opinion goes. We are loading on to the rift, ladies and gentlemen, for the final game of the day. It is Dignitas taking on Coast in the decider of the fifth and final place in the North American Summer Split for the LCS. The loser will be taking part in the Summer Promotion Tournament next week. There is a lot on the line, and we're going to see yeah. both of these teams chilling in the tri-bush as we have seen two games in a row. Yeah, really, one win here saves them so much trouble down the road. It means they can start thinking and preparing for the summer split. If they lose, it means they have to then start preparing for a challenger team, which are wild cards, a bunch of young up-and-coming players with a lot of talent. And they'd be going into that on a huge downward swing of emotions. It is not something any team wants to deal with. One of the things that stands out for me from the last promotion tournament was when Ninjas in Pajamas had been knocked out by KMT, a team now known as Rocket. <laughs> Miffy came out after the matches and said he has never felt the pressure more than in game two of that series where he said, my job is on the line. My future, my career is no longer entirely in my hands. And Miffy got, in, got into his own head. Mm -hmm. And a small part of that pressure is put onto this game in particular because it wouldn't end their LCS summer split, but it would mean there's a chance that it is over. And both these teams having promotion tournament experience, they know all about that. Yep. Is the case. So we are back into the game, ah. and that is a significant swing back. 40. I did not anticipate that powerful of a swing. 60-40 in favor of Coast this time around. The Twitter hashtaggers are wise beyond their years. Well, they are, they are, and, and I uh, undervalued their wisdom. So five members of Coast, Moving towards the top half of the map, we see Shifter has once again returned to lane. Shifter v Skara, while the rest of the team goes for those invades. And buddy system being employed, I'm going to assume. Let's see if Zion Spartan follows Nintendo more effectively this time. Speaking of the promotion tournament, it was actually Complexity Black, a challenger team, that was the first team I saw doing this system, where they share all three camps on one side of the jungle and then go to lane with experience. So I give credit to them for that strategy. And I will follow your lead and say, well played, fellows. Right now, Dignitas moving towards Larry White, as uh, we coined him in the previous game. Barry White being taken down by Coast over in Dignicide's, Dignitas's side of the map. And we'll see if Dignitas can get to the Dragon. I think that's going to be the key. Uh, you know, we talked about this previously, how Dignitas got that advantage early on in game one. Can they do it again? Mm -hmm. Now in game three. Yeah. Looks like Coast is adapted to this. They're very easily opting into kind of exactly the same strategy we've seen in games one and two. The blue side has changed here. And the questions will remain somewhat similar. How does QDP do with the empty lane farm? It's very interesting. Where do they find team fights? It's very interesting to think uh, about how both of these teams have opted into the more passive let's do the predictable style. True. As opposed to either team trying to set up and gank or defend their blue buff or trying to win the game You're right. at that point. So it's, it's, it's quite an interesting psychological discussion. I think that's where fear comes into play a little bit and not wanting to lose instead of wanting to win. What this does set oh. up though, uh -huh, is a 1v1 in the mid lane. Shifter is so strong in 1v1s, especially Lulu early on into the game. When you're doing these four-man pushes, it is a complete skill matchup in that mid lane. Shifter comes out on top, backing Scar into a corner and champion select, and then crushing him in game. Scar got owned. Straight up yep. 1v1. I did not anticipate that level of burst. I personally have not been particularly blown away by 4.5 Lulus in the laning phase, mm -hmm. but Scar just got bullied out, and Shifter, with a very early advantage, got himself that Chalice of Harmony already and he's really going to make Scar's life difficult in these next yeah. few minutes. Scar got hit by far too many Glitter Lances early on in the lane, and the auto attack trading was just too much from Shifter. That puts smiles and confidence in everyone on Coast. They have so much faith and confidence in Shifter. 
that when he gets going, the whole team plays better. Shifter, please, is the call from Coast, and he delivers in game three. So Team Coast now resetting themselves across the lane. It's once again Zion Spartan getting that uh, bomb. Scar has been ganked. Flay pulls him backwards. Cocoon lands. That is one dead mid laner. Ah. Final hit goes to a spidling of Nintendo. They were trying to give it to Shifter, actually. They were that secure with their kill. Scar still doesn't burn exhaust because he was dead at that time. There were three people on him. This time, the Rome kill goes to Daydreamer as well. Sneaky little gank out of the fog of war there from Nintendo with the repel from the brush. If there was ever a time to try and put a player on tilt, it would be now. Scar yep. is 0 2 0. Uh, still sort of even in CS, but that surely will not be the case for much longer. Taking test, clear out a pink ward. And Nintendo grabbing his red buff. Ooh, they are trying a little bit of an evade, trying to roam around more so than previously. They get warded over the wall, and they might try a fast four-man push on the top lane, but they are warded out very well here. Well, let's see if Kiwi Kid can find a Zenith Blade. There are two members of Coast underneath this tower, and Dignitas have begun sieging. They've got quite a bit of damage to play with, but not enough minions, I feel. Yep. Daydreaming and Wiz Fusion actually defend. Kiwi Kid eats another death sentence. It is the game of the day so far, as far as Kiwi Kid is concerned, but doesn't doesn't equate to anything. And let's actually get back to Skara and whether or not he may be on tilt in this game because Shifter is doing a very good job against him. But just consider the situation that Dignitas has put Skara into. You go back to week 10 of the LCS. They tell him out of the blue that he's benched. He rejiggers himself, goes into a coaching role. He does a great job. The team all talks well. They go three and three over the past two weeks with Golden Glue. Even though Golden Glue isn't necessarily performing, Scar is relieved. He has decreased pressure from not playing, even though he wants to continue playing, but his coaching job is good because he's not spending as much time playing League of Legends and practicing his mechanics. Yet then, guess what, Scar? You're playing again. How was all that relaxation for you? Maybe he's stronger tactically, but mechanically, nobody can expect him to be on Shifter's level because he was coaching for a couple weeks and let his mechanics drop. That has resulted in him giving up that 1v1 first blood kill. Shifter not farming quite as effectively considering Scar has been killed twice. But it is super early on and those death timers are very short. And Zion Spartan now roaming to this mid lane. Coast have painted a massive bullseye on Scar's back. Mm -hmm. And that's the third... I'm not even going to call it an attempt, but that is the third sort of signal that okay. Coast are trying to get into Scar's face. Everyone's trying their hand at him. Next time we're going to see Wiz Fusion come mid lane for a gank because everybody else has tried to help him. And this game has actually calmed down into a bit of a laning phase right now. Let's see if Cutie Pie and Kiwi Kid can make anything happen in this lane. Well, Kiwi Kid with a very half hearted attempt at putting some damage down to Wiz Fusion does land the Zenith Blade, but Kiwi Kid, uh, I mean, Cutie Pie was nowhere near applying any sort of poke there. So, Kiwi Kid. Landing the Zenith, not really gaining, garnering any sort of advantage. Scar, I guess level 6 with that blue buff, will be returning to lane a full level behind Shifter on Lulu. Both players with their respective uh, Ancient Golem buffs. And mm. Scar has been running scared. Every time we see him, he's sitting way far back in that lane. Yeah, Lulu's turning into that lane bully. Just wait for the Athenes. Although you can't do the help picks double Glitter Lance trick anymore. He can still land his Glitter Lances. See, he's a very good mid laner. Crumbs. Really needs to hit level 6 so he can start getting some ganks off. But the lane pushes have put him behind. He actually has not done very well in these games where he's had to help out on the early buddy system turret pushing if he can't just get back to farming his jungle full stop. This actually takes us back to a discussion that you had uh, yesterday talking about Crumbs being in a difficult position because his solo laners are oftentimes behind and Crumbs has to carry more than so just much. his weight in exactly. the game. We'll see if his chilling in this top lane bush is going to work out in his favor. The wave is pushing towards Dignitas' tower, but with Fusion and Daydreaming don't really look to be in risk of being jumped on just yet. Yeah. This... You can tell how cautious these teams are being in the third game just because of what's on the line and because both games have kind of gotten out of hand for each team. So they're really afraid of making that one mistake that'll snowball them behind. You gotta give props to Wiz Fusion and Daydreaming there. They didn't push past the mid part of the lane at all. And if by some spider sense, 
the moment they do, Crumbs is nowhere to be seen. He backed off a few seconds prior and just a really good read of the situation. Yeah, because right now Zion's actually freezing a lane, which means Cruiser is free to roam and try and make plays, which is why the rest of Coast actually has to play very conservatively right now. We're actually going to have a five-man roam up top lane from Dingatoss any moment. Well, this is going to be difficult. Let's see. That's a minion that catches the Sonic Wave. Cruiser not going to be able to do anything about that. Five members of Dignitas in that top lane. Teleport is available for Zion Spartan. Pretty good poke into Cruiser. There's been support now. Nintendo is here along with Shifter. This is a five on four until the teleport comes oh. up. That's a shockwave. Catches Nintendo and Daydreaming. The Solar Flare was impeccable from Kiwi Kid. The easy kill secured for Dignitas. Teleport blown by Zion Spartan, but the re engage is a real possibility. Distance nice. From Scar to get away. They get a kill, but that was a lot blown for just the kill. And it was really nice because Scar led with the shockwave that went into the solar flare. So they relied on Scar to make the initiation. Zion, though, trying to power through. That's a good kickback from Cruiser. Saves Cutie Pie's life. Flash burned by Zion, throwing out those transcendent blades. Not translucent. Yeah, it's been a long day. Zion Spartan really trying to become involved in team fights with that one. I think it would have been just as well served for him not to teleport in because the kill had already happened and he wasn't able to turn one around anyway. But all said, because it was a very bold dive by Dignitas and an extended chase afterwards, Dig is too low and Coast ends up getting the drag. Right. Global objective secured in favor of Coast. This is the first time they've secured the first dragon of the game. Uh, yeah. In game one, Dig snuck it super early at four minutes. Game two, Dig grabbed it at 10 minutes in a much more coordinated fashion. And if we go back to yesterday's series, Dignitas started really strong against Curse. Mm -hmm. They picked up a, a, a strong early dragon fight, a good advantage, but from there on out, Curse just grabbed the reins and never let Dignitas back in. It's like they're preparing very well for game one, but then don't know how to adapt mid-series. Well, Crumbs just got caught up. That's just melted. Uh, everything landed. The, the cocoon into the ace in the hole. Now, Kiwi Kid is in trouble. Can Daydreaming land any more CC? And a, a bit unfortunate for Crumbs. He was just stun locked there. Yeah, and now a push down bottom where Coast can start getting turret control. Something I have to point out about Crumbs is the teleport comes in to actually save the turret. Flash alt though, oh, oh boy. Solar Flare catches Nintendo, not the greatest. Now the Zenith Blade lands onto Daydreaming. There's no culling available as the exhaust is gonna slow Cutie Pie in his tracks. A wild growth onto Daydreaming and that's the turn. Kiwi Kid gives up the fourth kill of the game. Skara has joined the party, but this is a 3v4 in a best case scenario and Dig can't really stick to Coast. Another kill in favor of Coast when it was Dig that started that. The roam by Shifter came in at just the right moment because it seemed like Coast was kind of dead to rights, which is why Dignitas was so freely going in, not necessarily landing clean spells, but Crumbs is back, level six, trying to make something happen. Let's see if he can. Lands on Wiz Fusion's head. That's a flash forward. There's no tower to fall back to. Look at the stealth. Now, Wiz Fusion's the first victim. Daydreaming is taking everyone and Dig for a walk. The culling plus the tower. This is going to be a dead chain warden. Cutie Pie grabs the third kill of the game. Now, Cruiser's actually trading with Zion Spot, and there's no mana on Zion. And Cruiser peels off, decides the minion wave is uh, slightly more confirmed. That could be a very critical play there by Coast bottom lane, overstaying, and in my opinion, letting Crumbs back in the game. I've watched a lot of Dignitas games, and I've never seen Crumbs as far behind as he was a couple minutes ago. He was level five, 10 and a half minutes into the game. He usually gets level six around seven minutes because he's a very good farming jungler and he always gets his XP. It was not the case this time, but since he was behind in XP, when he got those kills onto Wiz Fusion, it means he gave a little bit of bonus experience to help him catch up and he might be kind of back in the game now on Kha'Zix. Well, the next few ganks are definitely going to tell the story of Crumbs' ability to impact this third and deciding game in the series. Kiwi Kid is level... Uh, six at the moment. Helping out Skara in this mid lane. Kiwi Kid's roamed a large amount this series, but it's something you've talked about he does very often anyway. Yep. And Daydreaming is somewhat had his roam. number. It's oh, his absolute favorite. That was great. Two wards yeah. from the single sweeping lens. A little unfortunate for Daydreaming, not really maybe <laughs> looking at the uh, animations on his screen too, too well. Gotta be watching out for those sweepers. Leona with the quick little auto attack reset to get the extra ward kills in. I also want to touch on the fact that Wizfusion has a CS lead over Cutie Pie for the first time in the series, and maybe even for the first time against any opponent all weekend long. Wizfusion has been yep. down in CS at the 10 to 15 minute marks, and even with the death to his name, has been CSing fairly well. So Coast, hold on to this very small lead, grouping towards this bottom half of the map, and maybe, maybe going to push for another tower. 
Zion trying to clear this way because he knows a dive's coming. Well, Solar Flare is up. It does connect. Zion spot and gets caught by the Zenith Blade. Crumbs is tanking the tower for just a little bit. That was a Dragon's Rage kick, and Dignitas should get the kill. A leap forward from Crumbs. One last hit should do it. Doesn't get the skill shot. It's not over. Coast managed to secure a tower. Zion sidesteps a Sonic Wave. Move a little, and that, that was close. Wild Growth was so close. Shockwave onto Shifter. Now he's in trouble. Exhaust is out. Skara uses the summoner spell. Wild Growth throws him up. Too little, too late. Double kill. You called it. Crumbs is back. Absolutely back. But the rest of Coast is pushing the bottom lane as well. This has just turned into a very back and forth game. Because they overcommitted, well, not overcommitted, because they're pushing bottom. And Dignitas cleaned up the Coast solo laners. They're getting a turret back out of this one. Dignitas are back in this game. They grab two more kills onto Crumbs' Kha'Zix, a player who arguably is a large determining factor in Dignitas' wins. Here's a replay. Yeah, this was a little bit crazy as far as Dignitas goes. It was a smart dive, and they actually went before the minions had even aggroed the turret. And then Zion, it's, it's crazy how this worked out. Because the dive wasn't clean, and because Dignitas missed these skill shots, they actually get more out of it since Shifter comes all this way, uses all of his spells just to get in range, and then Scar was waiting for him on the way back, and then Dignitas can clean up. They burn everything. They get both soul laners dead on coast, which is of utmost importance, and a turret afterwards. Huge momentum swing there for Dignitas. Gold dead even. Double buffs on Crumbs with the dragon on its way. And we'll see what Crumbs can do with those buffs as Dignitas now moving towards the Dragon Pit. I think Vision Control is in favor of Coach. They've got a few more wards in and around this area of the map. Daydreaming's in a little bit of trouble. Takes some poke from Dignitas, but has the support of the rest of his team. And wisely, Dignitas don't overcommit. Now, Cruiser has a level advantage and an item advantage over Zion Spartan. This is a big, big advantage for uh, Cruiser, considering how poorly the matchup went in game two. Yeah. This game is close, unlike games one and two. Another pressure top by Crumbs, but he doesn't have the third Amigo in this one. He's got to get back down bottom. Well, Dragon has going to spawn in 10 seconds time. We did see Nintendo, he was moving his way top, decided to back away the moment there was no actual dive coming in. Both teleports available for Cruiser and Zion. All right, game one was decided because Dignitas won all the dragon fights the coast forced. Game two swung a little bit when Daydreaming got a threshold while Dignitas was trying to contest what will happen in game three because coast is around the dragon taking a fair bit of poke. All right, we will find out shortly. Daydreaming below half hit points. Coast appear to be on the retreat. Look for the Solar Flare. Kiwi Kid locked in place. Kiwi Kid eats another death sentence. Solar Flare comes down, slows down Shifter, not the greatest. Nintendo forced to nice uh, repel up in the air. The Shockwave pulls members of Coast together. First kill is onto Daydreaming, and now Dignitas chasing them down. Shifter gets away thanks to the movement speed increase and a, a 90 cal bonnet over the wall. Puts Wiz Fugin alive for a few seconds before a quick roundhouse to the head takes him out. Nintendo and Zion Spartan get away with their lives. Two for zero, and most likely the Dragon. This is now a big lead for Dignitas after that fight. It was rather clean, actually. Even though the, the ultimate from Leona wasn't, the rest of the fight went very well. Let's take another look at this one. Coast puts a lot of damage on a Kiwi Kid, but doesn't kill him, which lets the reinitiation re happen for Dig. And then Scar lands a pretty good Shockwave that is followed up on by I'm a Cutie Pie. Most importantly, then everything else from Dignitas can pile on. Lee Sin was free to dive without taking damage since he's got a very squishy build and a mental win for Dignitas in that fight. Oh, Cutie Pie just able to dash away. Had enough mana for that ability to remove the slow. And as you've highlighted, Dignitas now in control after that very good team fight. We'll see if they can execute it again. Coast were in full retreat mode. Dignitas didn't really hesitate to initiate. Teleport in the back line once again. Cruiser, can he find somebody? That means he lands right on top of Nintendo. And they just squash the spider under their boots, as you expect. A rampage for Crumbs after that horrendous start. has got to feel really good for Dignitas. He has all the momentum behind him now. That goes bottom lane overstaying has had some dire circumstances or consequences for the rest of this game. Now they're pushing on a mid-tier middle Uncontested. turret. There's nobody from Coast here that even wants this fight. We do see Daydreaming sticking a little bit forward. He's going to be careful not to get caught by any of the crowd controls. Zion Spartan was waiting in the wings, and truthfully, he didn't really make any attempt to defend the tower. So Dignitas, take the tower lead. The first time in the game, steal away a blue buff on their way out. And slowly crawling ahead in terms of objectives yeah. and gold. I'd say they're quickly crawling ahead, I guess. Running ahead, that's a nice try. 
Eh, it wasn't. No, that was, nah, that was he was pretty quick. That's a bad that's, that's he, didn't, <laughs> he didn't even burn a flash. That's boots of mobility. <laughs> so point. I'm starting to think Kiwi Kid is a little bit of a vandal because he's spray painting those Phoenix insignias yeah. all over Summoner's Rift. He's just showing us how good he is at drawing them. Wouldn't it be great to have a Solar Flare right now against Coast and they can actually push this mid lane with impunity because they know the Solar Flare is down. No way. De Kiwi Kid just wants to eat the Death Sentence. Let's see if it gets. Oh. That's a great Shockwave. Nintendo to shift up, pulled back into place. The Death Sentence comes down, but nobody from Dick is pushing into it. The Death Sentence Go does on. connect. It's onto Skara. Zion dives in. That's two kills for Coast. Wild Growth keeps Zion alive as now Crumbs is somewhat overextended. Kiwi Kid still looking for something. Gets slowed by the Glitzalance. Cutie Pie. Pokes down the damage, but at the end of the day, Coast execute that well. 2 4 0. No finishers on that fight for Dignitas. Crumbs got locked up as soon as he went in. Now the push goes. I wonder how far they're going to continue this one because Dig is still low and Coast is still pushing. Ace in the hole goes out. Kiwi Kid to mitigate some of the damage thanks to that eclipse. Cutie Pie's low on mana, needs to be very careful about his positioning. The Lance hits hard and Coast, they get one and damage on the inner turret. This game is far from. Uh, being controlled by either team right now. Yeah, we got ourselves a good old-fashioned showdown for Game 3 between Coast and Dignitas to see who remains in the LCS and who has to re-qualify in the promotion tournament. I think more importantly as well, in this game, at 20 minutes, mm -hmm. both teams are more even. Yeah. In both of the previous games, you felt Dig was someone in control Game 1, you felt Coast was someone in control Game 2, and here's that mid lane fight. Yeah, and this kind of shows you how even the, game, the teams actually are. It's mainly just because the Solar Flare wasn't up for Dignitas that they ended up losing this one, and because some clutch skill shots were landed. If there's a Solar Flare on Kiwi Kid, and if Daydreamer doesn't land that hook on Ascara, it's not a 2 for 0. That could actually be a one fight for Dig. So, touche. Well played by Coast. We do see over the last few minutes, Zion Spartan has completed that Trinity Force, but he's dealing with Cruiser who has the Ravenous Hydra and the Giant's Belt completed. I'm looking forward to seeing that 1v1 because previously Cruiser, he just had to book it. Every yep. time Zion looked him in the eyes, he's like, nope, don't want this piece out. And he moved his way down the line. So we'll see how this uh, duel turns out in a few moments. And yes, the teams are fairly close, but the individuals aren't too disparaging and farm either. That's one of the more interesting things about this. It's not like there's an overpowering AD carry on one side and an overpowering top laner on the other. Cruiser, though, has an overwhelming amount of people coming down at him. Can he survive long enough for the support? Kiwi Kid's coming in from the river. Solar Flare lands onto oh, Zion Spartan. Crumbs jumps into the team. Zion is going to dash back to the minions. He's pulling them into the team away from him. Sonic Wave connects. Cruiser lands the skill shot, and now the rest of Coast are scrambling to, to defend this top tower. How many fights have we seen up in this top lane? More than I'm used to seeing in these matches, and the main damage threat is down for Coast. It makes this push a little bit less dangerous for Dig, but that Lulu wave clear is a little bit much. Yeah, great wave clear from Shifter. He holds onto the tower. Dignitas don't even get near for a single auto attack. Pie continues to push up this mid lane, he's got a CS advantage. Dignitas no roaming as this mobile hit squad, mm. as it were. And Dig, you know, every time Coast does something well, Dignitas find a way to regain control of the game. It's still a 3,000 gold lead yeah. in favor of Dignitas. They've accumulated a few more advantages since that 2-0 fight they lost in the mid lane. They've kind of regain control. A lot of that just has to do with crumbs. Look at this, who will win? Dignitas crawling back. I feel like for taking this live, it's gonna be going a little bit farther up towards Dignitas as this game moves on because they are coming together. Crumbs is stronger. A little bit crawling up there. A few, few, few more minutes, we'll need to check yeah. back in on this one because you are correct. Dignitas with a great play. What I love about that top lane tower they just picked up, they made an attempt, Coast defended, Coast peeled away to go elsewhere in the map. And Digger just like, oh, hang on a minute. We can grab that one uncontested. And they did. Mm -hmm. So conscientious play from Dignitas. It also helps they've got, you know, 13 wards on the map. Yeah. The whole top half is littered. Regardless, Dragon has respawned. Coast have uh, positioning right now. And Dig, they're looking to contest as they have been doing all series. Lulu is quite strong in these team fights. If you can get off multiple Glitter Lances at the right time. However, the Kha'Zix, Lee Sin, Orianna has been just exquisite. And honestly, I'm a Cutie Pie's Lucian is ripping these fights apart with his culling and then followed up with just nice dashes coming in. 
Jacob Toss is absolutely right to start this dragon, but Kiwi Kid's got to be careful. Oh, Kiwi Kid's in so much trouble. Solar Flare is up. Can he connect? That's the question. Daydreaming and Zion Spartan this time pulls into the shockwave. Crumbs is looking to clean up. That's one. Cruiser gets the kill credit. Dignitas continue through the chase, but the HP bars are very, very low. Cruiser gives up the ghost. He's the first victim of Dignitas to fall. Ace in the hole comes out. Cutie Pie survives it. Great fight there by Dignitas. Yes, there was someone getting caught out of position, but he still landed the great shock shockwave after that one, and they get the dragon plus an even trade. If they can make it back before more turrets fall, it would be a little bit more even, but even so, I think that turret was gonna be dying soon anyway. The dragon is a nice take by Dig. And they still hold on to that gold lead. Zion Spartan is getting more terrifying, but he is behind in items. A chain vest next to a completed Randian's Omen. Yeah, Cruiser just gold on those guys. It's actually 1,200 ahead for Cruiser and 2,200 ahead for Crumbs over Nintendo. Uh, that kind of happened for Crumbs in game one. Nintendo shut him down in game two, but despite shutting him down early in game three, Crumbs has found his way back. That's sneaky Kazix. Goes all the way back to Wiz Fusion and Daydream and getting caught out. Mm -hmm. All the way back to those two kills 13, 14 <laughs> minutes ago, however long it was. He gave. It's hard Crumbs. to keep a bug down. It is. It, it, it gave him the kills that he needed to. So, no one's got the raid bug spray on them just yet. Kazakhs 415 got a 30 CS lead over Nintendo. A two level lead over Nintendo. And I really hate to bash on the guy, but he hasn't had a particularly strong impact in the smaller skirmishes. The team fights have been pretty good. His, his cocoons have been good. Mm -hmm. Give a guy credit. But unfortunately, in the 2v2s and 3v3s, he hasn't really found the picks. Yeah, and at this point, it's about if Coast gets caught in a rotation through the jungle. Nice scout there, throwing the Spiderling forward, but they still need to make their way to defend this turret. So, Cutie Pie's got a few auto attacks down. <laughs> their sentence onto the minion there from Daydreaming. Could not find Nobody was target. planning with that one. Yeah, I'm not was quite right sure. from the whole time. Maybe he oh thought uh, the tower was going to take it out a tad quicker than it did. Nevertheless, tower defense successful. And Coast hold on to their top in a turret for now. Yep, 4,500 gold now for Dignitas. If the game goes longer and longer though, without extending that lead, the percentage gold differential will decrease greatly. Daydreaming. what Daydreaming's trying to do. He's trying to start trouble. I don't know if they want to start trouble right now. Yeah, there's a lot of members together here. There he goes. He's, uh, he's decided to go in. He dashes right back out. That was pretty good poke. Nintendo once again gets locked up. Ah. Human Kid's solar flares have been somewhat questionable. Some great, some average. There has been such a small amount of follow by the rest of Dignitas when Kiwi Kid throws out the solar flares. He's throwing the max range. Sometimes he can't even follow his own up. The Xenos blades have been nice though. And Kiwi Kid eats another death sentence. Now Zion Spartan is the target. Wild Growth is up. He decides to re-engage. That Shockwave. is a great shockwave. Everyone from Coast gets pulled together. Nintendo, the only one that escapes. It won't last long. Xenos played a tiny bit early. Nintendo is going to move away. Gets the shield from Lulu. Two quick kills, and Dignitas are on the inhibitor turret. Two, four, zero, and a great shockwave by Scar, who started the game getting first blood in the mid lane. He's came back strong. Nine assists from the 12 kills. Dignitas gets an inhibitor. They manage to grab absolute control in the game. Even though Daydreaming landed that hook, it was not yeah. a hook that he wanted. And just watch this. It was almost like Coast was baited because Kiwi Kid's solar flare was down. Everyone groups up in this corridor, and Scar sees the shockwave, hits four. Oh. Everyone but Nintendo Dex. And then Cutie Pie hits him through with that Q of Lucian and just destroys everyone a little bit more. That AoE from Dignitas doing work against the coast composition. 7,000 gold in the lead. Dignitas now have such a stranglehold in that spot, on that fifth place position, and a guaranteed roll in the summer split. We'll see if they can close it out. This is arguably the hardest part of uh, League of Legends, but they've definitely got all the tools they need to ensure it happens. Yeah. Slowly getting more and more gold. Oh, Coach Crumbs is going to want to get a catch. Got a pretty long jump range on that guy, and he's got his Randwoods as well, plus a pretty tanky build. It's tough to catch him. Fusion, however. Ooh. That solar flare. Pixel away from death. Would have been so incredibly close. And that's one of those times again, Kiwi Kid's solar flares 
Definitely not. You know what? Good. He's firing these solar flares more than I think anybody else I've ever seen. Yeah. You miss every solar flare you don't cast. <laughs> well, you what miss. say? <laughs> Kiwi Kid misses a lot that he does cast as well. Yes. And we'll have to see <laughs> if he can close this one out. To be fair, to be fair, they're 12-7 up, and I am being a bit overly harsh. It's one, strange, one, though, because Kiwi Kid had such a great performance yesterday. Uh, he's picking it up on Leona. He's definitely understanding the tankiness of it. And a lot of these fights, he's honestly soaking up a lot of damage, which is beneficial. Oh, him. that was oh. close. In one way or the other. That was so incredibly close. Scar just gets out of the cocoon stun to flash away from the death sentence. Ace in the hole. Oh, missed it. <laughs> a little bit. Hey, curve the bullet. I mean, Wish yeah. Future just curves the bullet. Been watching a bit of uh, Angelina Jolie. So now Coast. Uh, this also feels a bit desperate. They, look, they've kept yeah. the super minions in control in this mid lane. They've been trying to force something on Dig. And I they've mean, caught Crumbs. They the know question. they have someone low. They chain the stuns onto the stealth target and they just keep messing them up. That is a great solar flick. Crumbs manages to jump away. Kiwi Kid, I'm sorry for calling you out because you just saved Crumbs' life. Locks up members of Coast and Crumbs gets out. They're, oh, they get another one on Ascara? Really? Ascara is gone. How many hooks is Daydream going to land to try and bring Coast back to life here? They have Scar it down, Crumbs was back to base, and Cruiser would have to TP in. They may just get this Baron, but there's going to be a lot of damage coming down from I'm a Cutie Pie, potentially. This is going to be so difficult for Dignitas. How fast can they do this in. Baron? This is a teleport from Cruiser. Baron still alive in the background, 2,500 hit points. Zion Spartan gets the Wild Growth. Kiwi Kid is in the middle of the entire team. He's zoning four. Crumbs looking for an execute. That's a flash away from Kiwi Kid. Not the greatest of Randy and Omens is Dignitas. They've interrupted the Baron, number one. Number two, Stop. they haven't given up any more kills. And something that is becoming more and more apparent is it's just difficult for Coast to do damage. Crumbs jumps on Zion. Oh, Nintendo lands the cocoon. Here comes Cruiser. Cruiser looking for the sonic wave. That one went wide. Now Nintendo in a little bit of trouble. Dragon's Rage is available here for Cruiser. Let's see just if he can get one. the sonic wave. He connects. Bye. That's going to be a dead spider. Just a matter of time. Cruiser will finish it out. Gets cocooned down. Oh, no. <laughs> sonic wave. Right. That closes it. No assist for anyone else. And Dignitas now have some time. Super minions almost taking that turret down. Coast actually had a good peel and a very good opportunity to fight Dignitas there. But it became readily apparent, as Dignitas takes this Baron uncontested, that Coast just can't kill Dignitas. You consider that Lulu is low damage to begin with. Then their other main damage dealer, Zion Spotten, who they're trying to protect, is incredibly attack speed reliant. Yet there's double Randwins on Dignitas, and Lee Sin's attack speed slow from his E that is eating up Zion Spartan. He is not able to stick and deal damage to anyone. Take a look at this fight and really just see how little damage Dignitas takes. Zion Spartan jumps directly on top of them and gets Lulu off. But then Cruiser slows his attack speed and Zion Spartan can't help but run away. He used an E on Kiwi Kid. That was his contribution to that fight as a Trinity Force Aurelia. That's why they couldn't kill Dignitas and eventually got pushed out of this one as Crumbs is able to re-engage. So Dignitas gonna be very happy. They secure them, the Baron for themselves after Crumbs and Skara looked to give up uncontested kills. Crumbs got out with his life thanks to a good save by Kiwi Kid. And once again, Crumbs sends his sights on the strike. It's very clear Crumbs likes dragons. He's done a lot of solo <laughs> dragons this series. Nocturne in game one, I think he got three of them by himself. This is just going to add another dragon to the tally of Dignitas, and they've had great Drake control over yeah. all three games. It's part of his need to do it all himself. He's like, guys, I'll take the dragon. You go over there. I can do it myself. Just don't five, get one, five. hooked. Don't, yes. don't let Daydreaming land one. Daydreaming zero, five, seven. Scar, please, stay away from the fresh. <laughs> that's all, that's all Krebs is telling him right now. Scar and Kiwi, I think. Uh, Kiwi's all right. He's yeah. tanky enough he can take it, He's I feel like. Super beefy. Got that Aegis of the Legion. Had the face of the mountain for a while. Hasn't upgraded his Scythe Stone yet, but hasn't needed to. And he's been sitting on that chain vest for uh, an extended period of time. Dignitas up to 10,000 gold in the lead. They're going to grab their seventh tower of the game. No one from Coast is even nearby, and I don't think they could contest. That is a barren up Dignitas team. They don't want no piece of that. Yeah, the hooks aren't doing much here because Coast just does not have very much damage potential team-wide. The inhibitor's up. Dignitas is gonna go in and try and siege this one down. They're actually doing it without the minions. Well, they've got a lot of power to play with. Coast, how do they defend? Do they defend? That they don't. The question. They do not have the damage or the ability to initiate. Well, here goes my answer. 
Inhibitor secured. <laughs> Coast unable to fight that one. Looking to wait out and survive the Baron buff, I feel. Yeah, as Maybe much not. as they could punish Scar at the start of the game, he still hit his items. Death Cap, Athene's Unholy Grail, the Shockwave will be a huge threat. And how would Coast engage if Jigantos dives onto this turret? They're trying to clear the wave. Kiwi Kid just goes! He manages to catch Zion Spot. Let's look for the Solar Flare. That is a great Solar Flare! Coast locked up under the tower. Tower secured now as Cutie Pie manages to melt that one. Kiwi Kid has lost his life. The Nintendo and Zion hanging out on the sidelines. They have been hurt. Inhibitor is slowly being poked down. There's still a lot of HP on Zion's the in. side of Dignitas. Zion Spot jumps in. His attack has been slowed. He is just elite. Cruiser gets a kill. Now Nintendo forced to run away. Crumbs jumps in there, doesn't manage to get the kill. Unfortunately, the 10 dude repels Scar. in the air. Scar is in trouble. Glitzalance takes him out, but the inhibitor went down. Ace in the hole comes out. Two inhibitors. They lost a bunch of members. Yes. I think Dignitas will still be happy. I think they're going to say worth on that one because I'm a cutie pie. Spent a lot of time deliberately focusing down the inhibitors in those engagements. Coast very slowly was able to kill Dignitas, but that's Absolutely fine for them with two inhibitors clear. They're gonna have super minions. Let's watch this again to see exactly how it happened. That's a full health turret. And Kiwi Kid going in. Watch out for Cutie Pie. He's he's in the turret. He's Ooh. not helping out in the slightest. The shockwave lands, it takes them low. Then they get to stick around a little bit, and Coast is toying with the idea of disengaging, but they realize they can't just give up these inhibitors, and Dignitas is actually pretty low. It is a 5v4, and Crumbs is popping his off, but then after Cutie Pie puts out that bad calling, it means Zion can absolutely go. They all in, they see how much they can get. Wish Fusion does his best to do damage. He does kill Kazix midair, but they can't save the inhibitor, and they're now down even more. Have to give kudos to Cutie Pie. He made all of his focus was on the objectives. And thanks to the control, Dignitas now in control of the vote. Once again, 55% of you've been tweeting at us at DIG win and at CST win. So thanks for taking part in that one, guys. And Cutie Pie, again, I also just want to compare his mechanical ability. While all that nonsense was going on, he managed to use his E to dodge a cocoon from Nintendo. While all of that's happening, yeah. it blows my mind that he's got the presence of mind to see that happening and avoid getting locked in place. Super Minion's done two lanes, yep. dig on the top lane. This is just a matter of time. Well, <laughs> there you go. Solo that player. was out of sync. And no <laughs> one follows. Uh, another time. Once again. I wonder if there's not a shot calling discrepancy in the team. Something is going on with Dignitas, but if they win this one, they have a while to figure it out before the summer split, because a win would guarantee them their spot right there. Taking down Coast 2-1. Kiwi Kid gets hooked, but he's got a lot of tankiness. He totally wanted to that. Down. Nintendo just gets melted by that attack and dissonance from Skara. Skara looking to set himself up with a shockwave. Daydreaming lands a hook onto Kiwi Kid. Kiwi Kid gives up his life. The turret hasn't been touched, but there are super minions filtering to the Nexus turrets. It's only a matter of time for Dig get on the tower. As long as long as Dignitas keeps their presence here, Coast won't be able to defend it forever. The next minion wave is coming up. Those super minions are pounding down. It's tough for Shifter to kill these. When the super minions are next to each other, everything is buffed up extremely far. Three members of Coast are defending their turrets. Nintendo has been left to solo hold on to those objectives. Dignitas continue the siege. Four members in this top lane, and those uh, command attacks and dissonances from Scar really are hurting. With they melted Nintendo and they just hit with Fusion. With the Void Staff completed, it's still a threatening Orianna, despite how much he may have been shut down in the laning phase. Pretty good clear, though, by Coast. I'm surprised they're able to hold off these double Super Minion waves. It's because it was a 5v4 with Kiwi Kid going down. The inhibitors will be respawning soon. Maybe Coast actually holds out. Small wave clear from Coast in that top lane. I mean, it, it kept Dignitas off the tower for a prolonged period of time. And that means that Coast, they live to fight another day. Middle inhibitor has respawned. Bottom inhibitor won't be much longer before that's up. But I feel Crumbs will have his eyes set on the next Dragon, and maybe even the next Baron as well. Yeah, the objective rounds are up again right now. But if the inhibitors do fully respawn, it actually means they're contestable objectives for Coast. If Wiz Fusion could get to his Infinity Edge, I think as a team, they could rely on themselves to do a little bit more damage. They see Cutie Top, they try and get a fight. Now that's a flash away from Scar as Zion Spartan looks onto Kiwi Kid. Solar Flare was not used. Flash for flash at the end of the day. Attempt by Coast, doesn't net any gains. Well, Baron up, Dragon up in a few. They're trying to get the ward control right now. Dignitas just started up. Nintendo is pretty good at stealing these objectives, but expected Dignitas peel. And Wisfugion is nowhere near. Dignitas have decided to back away. 
Baron is actually still going down. Coast now have all five members with him. Kiwi Kid is the one tanking up the Baron. Death Sentence doesn't connect. Solar Flare comes down, appeals, forces Coast to split. Zion Spartans on the front line. Randy's a pretty good start for Coast. Down. We'll see. Look for the wild growth. That's a good wild growth. I believe that was on to Zion Spartans. He's both out of the fight. The Shockwave just destroys Coast HP bars. Nobody dies until that very moment. Nintendo is the only victim of the fight as Ace in the Hole goes up. Wow! Scorer just gets obliterated by the damage. One for zero. Baron's still up. As big as this advantage is for Dignitas, they are playing not as a team. They are individually doing their own thing. There's a shockwave that's not followed up uh, by solar flares. Kiwi Kid is seemingly just throwing them out. I'm a Cutie Pie is doing his best to try and carry this team. It's just not really together. That was actually a good initiation by Coast. Just watch this fight. Kiwi Kid's just on the Baron. There's no way he's gonna follow that up. He actually stepped on a trap while still in the Baron pit. He's not really a part of this fight. Then you see Coast. They do pop a decent randoms. And remember, they're down 10,000 gold without a great team fighting team. We don't have time to watch this again because Dignitas is forcing once again. Well, let's see what Kiwi Kid can do with his solar flare. Baron is up. There's not enough members of Coast nearby. Nintendo is miles That's away. Baron. And Coast caught napping with their pants around their ankles. Daydreaming does throw down the flay. It's not gonna be enough. The rest of Dignitas are on him. That was a good wild growth that at least delayed the oh, kill, but the resets are here. Crumbs jumps in, gets caught by a cocoon. Five members of Dignitas running down four members of Coast. Inhibitors have to be the target. Two exposed inhibitors, and they could do that because of the one kill they picked off at the end of that last fight, so they could just force the Baron very quickly. Now they can just force these two inhibitors very quickly, as Coast is dying for resources. There are minions pushing through this middle lane. Let's see what Dignitas decides to do. The Cocoon catches out onto Skara. There's no wild growth available. Kiwi Kid slows and intended. We've got a fight on two fronts, as Zion is going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Crumbs. To sign to back away, second inhibitor secured. Shockwave catches the 10 dude. The 10 dude is gone. There is only one inhibitor turret and three people on coast right now between Dignitas and the summer split of the LCS. It looks like they're going to do it. We do see Wizfusion doing the best he can. Shifter is onto Cutie Pie. Cutie Pie forced away. That's a flash from Shifter. He is still alive. He's running low on mana. Cruiser is fighting in the background on the Nexus turret. Wizfusion may be able to get him down. They've traded one for one. Dignitas still have a numbers advantage. They may have to play this one a little bit safer. Wow. So with the Baron buff and two inhibitors down once again, they, they haven't pull stopped. slightly back. They don't go all the way back. They're going to try and get this one. They do have Shifter down. There's just Fusion and Zion. He's pretty strong. Oh, Zion's looking for a target. Can he get Cutie Pie? That's the question. Zion's locked up. Zion's stunned. Zion's exhausted and Zion is dead. Now we look over to Fusion. He gets cold. That is another kill for Cutie Pie. Six. Zero seven. Ladies and gentlemen, Dignitas have done it. 2-1. They secure fifth place, and more importantly, a spot in the summer split of the North American LCS. It wasn't easy for them. You can tell Scar did not have a good time in that game, but the relief was palpable on the face of Crumbs and devastation on the face of Nintendo. Post will be taking part in next week's summer promotion tournament, replacing sixth in the spring split of the LCS. They will get the choice of teams. They will get first draft on who their opponents will be, but another time in the promotion yeah. tournament for the team Coast. Two splits in a row, unfortunately for them. Not the LCS storybook they would have want written for them. Summer split of 2013, they actually finished 